In this video, we're going to take a look at sequence questions in Adobe Captivate 12. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make YouTube videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it with your e-learning colleagues. Last week, I was working on a video for matching questions and uh, made me realize that I didn't have a similar video for sequence questions because I got to thinking about matching questions. And I've often used the match the column question for things like putting things in the right order. But another type of question where that can be uh, achieved is with the sequence question. So you can receive a jumbled up list of steps or procedures and putting them in the right order is the test for understanding, if you will. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sequence question. There's actually two different versions of the sequence question and I will show that to you in a little bit here. But let's start off by clicking on the new slide icon in my left hand toolbar and we'll go all the way down to the bottom here and we will select sequence. Okay, I'm going to delete that first slide. I don't need that. So let's take a look at the properties inspector for this particular question slide. So there is an alignment and spacing. You can certainly make your your slide match the width and how much margins you wish to include here. 80 seems to be an average that most people tend to use. The very next thing you can choose is whether this is a graded question or a knowledge check. If you make it a knowledge check, you lose the pagination for the quiz, but that's fine. You don't need that for a practice question. Let's leave this graded for right now. The next thing, of course, are the question properties. And here's where I can increase the number of answer options from the default of three, and we can change that to four or some other custom number. Four is good in this particular case. Now, I'm gonna come back to this in a moment. This is what I meant by there are two different types of sequence questions in Captivate. There's the drag and drop, which is what I prefer, and then there's the drop down option. And I'll show you both in a little bit. We'll start off with drag and drop, and then I'll duplicate this slide and turn it into that drop down option. Of course, you can turn on numbering for your items that might be beneficial. I find it a little distracting, so I leave that off. You can choose the number of attempts. Sequence questions tend to be a little bit more difficult than true, false, or multiple choice. So you might wanna give people two tries to get it right, or maybe three tries. Points for the correct answer. And penalty for wrong answer can be added, as well as a time limit. These two options, I tend to only select these when those situations exist in real life. So if there would be a penalty in real life for not doing this procedure correctly, maybe it deserves a penalty or if there's a specific time limit that you need to complete this activity within, you could enforce that as well. But I'm not gonna do that in this case here. Scrolling down a ways, you see we've got the design options that are available. There are a few different choices here where you can change the appearance, but there's still quite a bit of appearance changes that you can make yourself. And I'll show you those in just a moment here. Let's stick with the default design option for right now. Under components, you'll notice that there are two sections. So there's quiz mode. This is what the slide will look like when you are actually taking the quiz. So in other words, I'm choosing my answers, I'm submitting them, I'm getting feedback. When you are in review mode, and that's something you don't have to give your students, but if you want them to review the quiz after they've completed it, you obviously need to supply them with back and next buttons so that they can navigate through those questions. And you can also give them the option to view the answer. If you don't wanna do that, you can simply turn that option off. Let's return to quiz mode here. You could have a skip button, a clear button, a back button, but I'm gonna leave this as is for right now. This is fine here. 
Under appearance, we have things we can do to change the background. This particular question is going to be related to airport operations. So I might change this to an image. We can go to system here and I can navigate to where I've downloaded a picture or an image of a person going through the airport there. And we can change the appearance of this. We can do things like add a slight blur effect to that so it doesn't really take over the slide itself. I think I would also want to turn on the card option so that we can clearly see where our question is. And of course, under card, we can do things like make the corners a little bit more rounded. I like that myself, but I'm not a big fan of drop shadows, so I'm going to turn that off here. In this example, I have quite a long question stem, so I'm going to paste that in here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to one of the simple body types here. So it's a smaller font there as well. Let me put in my correct answers. Now, how you put in your answers, you simply place them in the correct order. There's no secret here to how these slides work. Placing them in the correct order and when you're in run mode, Adobe Captivate will automatically jumble these up and change the order here. You notice I'm getting an extra line break that sometimes happens. So I'm just uh, backspacing out of that when I get that. I got a bit of a typo here, scan boarding pass at kiosk. And I'm gonna change that to the same body type that I'm using for the rest of the slide as well there. So that looks pretty good. I did mention before that there are essentially two different types of sequence questions. So let's duplicate this slide so we can see an extra version of it. And I'm going to change this answering method from drag and drop in the second instance to drop down. So let's go back to the first one here and take a look at how this looks. Okay, so here's the first one here. This is real easy to do. You just simply drag the items and put them in the correct order. And when you think you've got it right, you press the submit button. I'm going to hold off on that for a second. This works on mobile and certainly my finger could drag these items. And then when I'm ready, I can press submit as well. So that's incorrect. Click anywhere to continue. Here is the drop down menu option. So Again, you can choose all the correct answers. In this case here, customs inspections, scan the boarding pass, go through pre-board screening. Again, on mobile, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to get these little drop-down menus appear. I, I kind of like the drag and drop better though. I still think it's better. One of the disadvantages of this layout is that I can literally select the same answer for all my answers really i mean i don't have to choose unique answers and that's a limitation of this drop down layout here is that again i've got multiple answers that are the same and i can still submit that whereas the drag and drop that's just not going to be a possibility but let's get it right in any in any case here customs inspection scan boarding pass go through pre-board screening and then finally head to domestic departure gate. Press submit and we've got that right. And of course we can click anywhere or press Y to continue with the rest of the e-learning course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at captivateteacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.